Welcome to another episode of the CHL Top 10 Show. My name is Scott Van Kuna, and as promised, this week I chat with the captain of the CHL's leading Portland Winter Hawks, as well as last season's QMJHL leading scorer. After making his return to the queue last weekend, Jordan Dumay becomes the first returning player as guest on the show. The Blue Jackets prospect is on the cusp of setting numerous Mooseheads franchise records, sitting just 18 points, 13 goals, and six assists back of Brandon Benedict. We talk about the changes in Halifax this season, including some key graduations and a new head coach, how he's helping the new faces on the team, and what they learned in their Q final loss to the Quebec Rampart. Here's Jordan Dumay. Excited to welcome back as a guest, the reigning QMJHL MVP and Columbus Blue Jackets prospect, Jordan Dumay. Jordan, how are you doing today? Doing good, how are you? I'm pretty good, thanks. Uh, Tough loss last night. What have uh, what have you guys been up to so far today? Today, I mean, we had a a bit of school, kind of, and uh, you know, went out to eat with the guys, and we had practice later. But uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, the game didn't end up how we wanted it to last night, but we'll we'll work on it. So, well, you, it's a third straight week for you guys in the top three of the CHL top ten rankings. I know you've only been back for three games. Was it was it nice to see the the boys holding their own without you in the lineup? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, you know, I kept in touch with them and stuff. And uh, like you said, it was uh, it's good for them to obviously play really well without me and uh, just try to fit in the lineup and uh, come back and win some games. So, And you made your debut last Friday against a tough Rouen team. It had been three weeks since you had played a game, about three weeks anyway. You opened the scoring 10 minutes into that one. Um, how did it? How, how did the legs feel after that game and how did it feel to get that that first goal out of the way quickly? Yeah, I mean, it was good to get out the way, I guess, and help out the team. But, uh, yeah, legs were a little heavy, especially the day after. But, I mean, obviously it was great. To, like you said, it's been three weeks. It had been a while, so it was good to get back into it. You finished with first star, three goals, two assists. Um, what happens? I, I'm curious. What happens with all the hats that get thrown out on the ice? I don't know. I, I mean, honestly, that's a good question. I mean, I know my, my neighbor kind of gave me a few from the hat trick he dropped them off at our door but the rest of them I'm not too sure I don't know <laughs> and then uh in that game obviously it was your goalie Mathis Rousseau who who ends up stealing the show I know you had the five points but he scores a goal what's it like uh it's always fun when somebody sees a goalie goal 328 remaining puck launched out of word Rousseau looking at the empty net he scores Mathis Rousseau into the empty net and the Mooseheads netminder has got his first Quebec Major Junior Hockey League goal. Are you kidding me? Uh, Mathis Rousseau leads the way to the bench. Leads that high five line. And the Q's top goaltender has become the Q's top goal scorer. What a shot right there as he elevates that one to launch it into the empty net. And who doesn't love a goalie goal? The Moose Edge, right back on top by three. Wow, what a moment for Mathis Rousseau. Yeah, I mean, it was it was great. I mean, obviously, it's kind of his personality. You could kind of see the celebration and stuff, and it was pretty funny. And, uh, I mean, obviously, we joke around with him a little bit and stuff after. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was great for the team and the and the fans. Is that something that he practices, like, like – did you think that was something that he could do because you've seen him shooting in practice and stuff? Not really. No, I've never really seen him practice it. But like I said, it's kind of like his personality. And the, he's the type of guy to like try that out. He's pretty comfortable and stuff. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've never seen him practice it, though. Yeah, and that was a no-doubter, too. Um, yeah. Not only not only is, is Roos scoring goals, but he's putting up some gaudy numbers as well, leading the league in wins and, and goals against and save percentage. How important is it for you guys to have him play strongly for you this year, knowing that you won't have the same, quite the same offense that you did last year? Yeah, I mean, it's it's obviously great to have him as a, you know, last uh, support back there. But, you know, obviously we know how good he is. I mean, uh, I've been with him since I was 17. And obviously in playoffs last year, I think that's where he really, uh, you know, he showed himself how good he is and, kind of one of the main reasons why we got to the finals and so far. So, I mean, we know how good he is and I think all his hard work is paying off now. So. And like I mentioned, you lost a lot of offense. So 
Goner, Doucette, and Lawrence, LaRue, Biasca. How do you how do you guys make up for that lost offense? You know, it's hard, it's hard to say. But I mean, obviously, I think I mean none of us like don't really try to think of it that way. I think we just go into every game and uh, into the season, just you know, just doing our best and uh, you know, playing our game and uh, you know, like I said, using everyone we have and all our tools to the most we can. So, obviously, some guys are elevated this year from where they were last year, and some new guys come in like Lou Levesque, who's tied for the team lead in in goals with seven already, and he's leading the team in shots. What's impressed you? I know you played on a line with him last night. What's impressed you with his play so far? You know, obviously the first thing is how fast he is, but, uh, you know, I mean, uh, obviously he really stepped up and so have uh, a couple other guys that are pretty young. So, I mean, it's great to have guys like him. And, uh, you know, I mean, he's fast and hardworking. So, I mean, it's good for our team. With with um, eight rookies on the, the the roster this year or eight that have played games so far, um, for you as one of the leaders, how do you teach them about the culture in Halifax, you know, the winning history and, and help them maximize their potential? You know, I think they I think they kinda they kinda know going into it. I mean, obviously we're kind of the moose heads in a way. And uh, I mean it's an honor for all of us to be playing and especially younger guys, I think they're aware of that and you know, just how we practice every day and uh, how we carry ourselves. I think they kinda look up to us. I mean, we have a couple of guys who have been here for like four years, so I think uh, we kinda try to show them the way, but like I said, I think they kind of know it, and uh, you know, kind of being a moose head is a it's an honor. I think they they kind of know it by now. So, when when you as part of that leadership group or some of the other guys, if you guys see stuff from them either in a game or in a practice, do you kind of pull them aside and say, "Hey, wanted to try this," or or this is the way you should do something? Yeah, you know, to a certain extent, obviously. I mean, uh, a lot of them like to learn, and they they tell us if we do anything wrong, just let us know and stuff. And I mean. We just try to make them feel as comfortable as we can. And obviously, it's good that they ask questions and stuff. But, I mean, our goal is kind of just let them play their game and, you know, just need them to be comfortable. And uh, when you're comfortable, I think it's when you get the most out of them. So, I think we just try to have a good locker room and everyone's comfortable and everyone's treated the same. So, Yeah, how important is that to, so that, you know, the rookies and the veterans, everybody know the lines of communication are open. Nobody's afraid to talk to guys and nobody's afraid to, you know, make mistakes and stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's kind of just like uh, the atmosphere you give out and the the vibe from the older guys. And I think, you know, as a, I mean, I got treated really well even though I was young, but I think I could kind of get a feeling of what it could be like if you're not comfortable and if you show up to the rink every day, you don't really kind of scared to be there. I mean, it could have a big impact on your on your game and even just your your life. So I think, uh, I think we do a pretty good job in our locker room and uh, I think everyone's happy to be at the rink every day. And this year you guys have uh, a new we'll say a new old head coach and in, in Jim Midgley, who who had spent seven years in Halifax, obviously before your time, um, but won a Memorial Cup there as an assistant coach. How has he been? And, you know, how have things kind of changed under his leadership and how are they still the same? Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously every coach is, uh, they have their little things and they're kind of, you know, they kind of bring in their own style of, of player practices. And uh, obviously he's been good to now and the, uh, it's only been a few games, so I mean, I'm kind of getting to know him more and more every day. But you know, obviously, our team's having a lot of success right now, and uh, he's a big part of it. So, what did uh, what did he say to you when you got back from Columbus? Like, what did he, you know, pull you aside and have a little conversation with you, expectations, etc.? A little bit, yeah. I mean, we talked over the summer a bit on the phone too, and I mean, obviously, there's some uh, little things I have to work on and stuff, and he's aware of them, and he's aware of my goals. So, I think. Uh, I think we're going to work well together. And, uh, yeah, I mean, try, learning, like I said, just getting to know more and more every day. So, Franchise record 140 points last year. You say you've got things to work on. That's kind of scary. What are the things that, that you want to work on and improve upon? Uh, you know, I mean, uh, there's a couple of things. I mean, obviously, I mean, the main goal is just to, to win. Obviously, we got so close last year, but uh, – you know, there's always little parts of my game, whether it's defense and, you know, there's a bunch of little things that I'm always trying to work on. So, I mean, it, it's hard to just say, but there's a, there's a couple of things. And and as for goals, obviously, like you said, the the main goal is to win a, a Q championship and head to the 104th Memorial Cup presented by Dow and Saginaw. Um, but what are some of your personal goals this year? I know you're, you're, you're right there. You're, um, for the franchise record and and points and goals assists and and you should have have all those titles by Christmas. But what are maybe some of the other personal goals you have? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't really set the 
like goals for my points and stuff. I think the I think those just come off of hard work. And I think when I'm playing my game, the points come come to me. But uh, you know, obviously is uh I'm just trying to get ready for the next level, obviously. And like I said, my defense and little things that are around the ice that uh need to work on and obviously uh things like world juniors and stuff are always in the back of your mind. I know there's a couple of guys in our team too. So I mean we try not to think we don't think too much of it. Obviously our main goal is to win games, but at the end of the day if you if I have to answer that'd be my answer. So and and as for like I mentioned the the team records, it's going to happen. You're going to hold the 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 goal scoring, the points, all time um, assists as well. What will it mean to you to hold those records? I know again, it's not the the end goal, but just what will it mean to you to have those? Yeah, I mean it, it mean a lot, obviously, if it happens. But uh, I mean at the end of the day, I think uh, that's a lot to do with my teammates and obviously the organization and uh, the higher the higher end of. Uh, not the higher but the higher ups in the organization, like the owners and the GMs, trust me from day one, and obviously surrounding me with really good players my whole career. So, but I mean, obviously, it means a lot to if I was the top of those uh, statistics and such a great organization. So, well, last year when we talked, you told me about the fire that was lit under you guys after being reverse swept in the first round of the playoffs two years ago. Um, you took a giant step forward last year, like you said, you made it to the Q final. You lost to the eventual Memorial Cup champions. Quebec Rampire in, in six games. The final four games were all one goal games. So it could have really gone either way. What did you guys learn from that run that's going to help you this year try to make another run? Yeah, you know, obviously it's uh, it's even hard to say what happened in the last game in the last two, three minutes. And uh, we we're all we we're all pretty stunned. And especially in the moment we after the game, we didn't even know what happened, honestly. But uh, you know, I mean, I think we're just gonna take that experience. Obviously, I mean, like we said the year before that, we got reverse swept in the first round and obviously we use that as motivation and kind of learn from it. And I think we're going to do the same thing with what happened last year. And obviously, obviously work on the little things. We have a new coach too. I think he's going to, he's going to help out and try to. So at the end of the day, I think we're just going to use it as motivation and the, all the little things we have to work on and the rest, uh, the rest will get taken care of. So. And, and I'll go back to the new guys on the team, the younger guys that weren't there for those two runs. How do you bring them up to speed with what it's like in the playoffs once you get to that time. Yeah, you know, obviously it's, it's a little hard to do that. I mean, to a certain extent, you can't really, you kind of have to play some games, get a get a gist of it. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I think, uh, I think your new coach is doing a good job of playing defensively. And, obviously, I think we're trying to be a, a harder team to play against and more defensive. So, I think they're going to they're gonna get a, the more games they play, they're going to start to get a catch of it. And, obviously, when we get into playoffs, it's going to be all business. So, and. Craig Button told me uh, last week that he feels like you guys are are ready to win it this year. And last year, GM Cam Russell went out and he brought in the likes of Doucette and Lawrence to help you guys. Does he talk to you guys at all? The you know maybe the the older guys, the leadership group, and say, hey, put me in a position to add, and I will add to help you guys. Uh, he doesn't say it, but I mean, obviously, I think uh, I think we're on the same page. I mean, obviously, the older guys, our leadership group, I think. I mean, we're all aware in our whole career where us and the owners and the GMs were kind of all on the same page of where we are as a team. And I think this year it's pretty clear, pretty clear where we are. But I mean, like I said, I think we, he doesn't just tell us that straight up. I think we use our common sense and we know where we are as a team and uh, we're confident. So and... <clears throat> last last year in that record setting season for you and MVP season, you were only held scoreless eight times, pointless eight times. How are you able to be so consistent game in and game out and help contribute almost on a nightly basis? Yeah, you know, I think I just try to stay as consistent as I can. I mean, obviously my line mates do a, are a huge part of it. And obviously I need to stay consistent, but I'm, I'm playing with four other guys on the ice. So, I mean, it's a, it's obviously up to them a lot too. And uh, shout out to them. But I mean, I think at the end of the day, I just kind of play my game. And like I said before, I think when I am playing on my game, doing the little things right, I think point, the puck and points come to me. So. And and with so many younger guys in the lineup, like like Lou, who you were on the line with last night, and we we talked about, do you do you say anything to them like, hey, keep doing what you're doing, just because I'm here, you don't need to feed me the puck all the time. Make sure you're getting your shots as well. I know he scored last night as well, but but do you make sure that they're not just deferring to you all the time? Yeah, I mean, obviously, like like I said before, I think I'm just trying to make them feel as confident as they can and. Uh... Obviously, I just tell them to play their game, not to worry. Even if they're asking me a bunch of questions and stuff and what to do on the ice. I mean, at the end of the day, I just tell them, just play your game and everything will work out. And 
yeah, I mean, like I said a bunch of times, just be comfortable and I think good things happen. So and we'll uh we'll touch on NHL camp, you know, your second NHL camp this year. How was it uh how was it different for you this time around after having one under your belt last year? Yeah, I mean it was great. I mean, obviously, like you said, is a after having experienced my first year, I came back this year with uh kind of know what to expect and I think it ended up being really good. And I mean I got to I think I played decent and uh, got to practice the NHL team and stuff for a couple of weeks, and it was a, it was a lot of fun. And I learned a lot. So, scored a OT goal in exhibition. What what was it like to see that one going? Yeah, that was great. I mean, obviously, uh, in front of our, our fans, that was it was a good feeling and all that. And uh, I mean, it was cool to do an NHL game, obviously. So, when you when you're looking at that roster and the other prospects that are coming up, are you are you getting more and more excited when you see who your future teammates are going to be and and how good that team's going to be? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, in the first place, it's obviously just a bunch of great guys there. And I think we're all pretty close. And, you know, the prospects tournaments, most of the prospects, and uh, we always have a good team there. It's always a lot of fun with the guys. So I think, uh, I think there's good things to happen over there. Is it is it a little bit weird when you when you go there and you've got a guy like James Malatesta, who you battled with in the Q final, or or Tyler Peddle, who you're going to be battling with all season long again this year? Is it weird, you know, having to come together and, and play with them? I mean, a little bit. I mean, I think James is a little different. I mean, we've kind of known each other for much years and we're kind of neighbors in Montreal, so I'm a little closer with him. But obviously when you play guys in your league and stuff and kind of meet them there, I mean, it's not all, it's not weird at all. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you kind of just get to know them more. And you, after playing them a bunch of times, kind of get to meet them as a person and see how they are. So it's cool. James didn't uh, rub in any championship stuff in your face? No, no, no. I mean, maybe a little bit likes to talk about his MVPs, but it's it's just all jokes, yeah. And and what was the message from you know Yarmo or or Pascal Vincent uh, when they sent you back to to Halifax? What did they want to see out of you this year in in your growth? Uh, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, just the basics, obviously. I mean, I didn't really end up talking to them one out at the end, but. I kind of went home quickly, but I mean, uh, it's pretty basic. I mean, I talked to them a lot during camp and I mean, Vance sounds like a great guy and I'm happy he's the coach and obviously Yarmo's Yarmo and he, he's a great guy and good business guy. So I mean, at the end of the day, I think, I think it's just the basics and uh, I know, I know, I know what I need to work on. So. And, and you mentioned the world juniors earlier last year, obviously didn't get the opportunity to play this year. It's in Sweden. What would it mean to you to to go and join that team and play a, a major role for Team Canada? Yeah, I mean, it'd be great, obviously, and I'd be honored. And uh, obviously, things didn't end up how I guess I wanted them to. But I mean, at the end of the day, I think uh, I just, I just use it as motivation. And, uh, and I'd be honored to go re represent my country over there. So, And as as a team like like you guys who are you know going to be competitive all year round and and the goal is to make it to the Memorial Cup, do you ever keep tabs on the other leagues? Do you see who's doing well or or just kind of see what's going on in those other leagues? A little bit, yeah. I mean, I guess you see it pretty often on social media and stuff. And obviously, I have a couple of friends in other leagues too, and we talk about once in a while. So, I mean, uh, I guess, yeah, I see, I see a couple of things. Who are who are those guys that you you reach out to and, and talk to? I'm assuming maybe Matejchuk might be one. Oh, yeah, guys like Matejchuk and obviously uh, David Goya on Sudbury. I think I play with him at Presco and we're really close, so... There's a bunch of guys like that, yeah, but those are main ones, yeah. This weekend, you guys are uh, on the road, so it'll be your your first road trip of the season, not going too, too far, but uh, facing off against Charlottetown and Bathurst. Uh, what do you guys have to do to get back on the, the right side of uh, the win column? You know, I think just play our game. I mean, things didn't – obviously didn't go as planned yesterday, but, I mean, it happens. I mean, it's a 68-game season, and uh, we're obviously going to lose some, so – I think we're just going to work on it and uh, just come back stronger this weekend. So, Jordan, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Thank you very much for joining me again today. Good luck the rest of the season and this weekend. Thank you. Appreciate it. The top-ranked Portland Winter Hawks are a model of consistency in the CHL with six consecutive 40-plus win seasons, not including the bubble year. For the past five seasons, Gabe Clausen has been taught about the winning culture in Portland and now teaches it. The captain tells me what it's been like playing for Coach Mike Johnson and with James Stefan and Jack O'Brien for the past five seasons. The pride they take on being a drafted and developed team and what it's going to take to get to the Memorial Cup presented by Dow.
Here's Gabe Clausen. Joining me now is captain of the top-ranked team in the CHL for a third consecutive week. It's Portland Winterhawks, Gabe Clausen. Gabe, how are you doing tonight? Doing pretty good, thanks. Uh, you guys are in the midst, well, I guess the, the beginning of an eight-game road trip, um, coming up on a three-on-three three this weekend. Uh, obviously at a hotel right now. Where are you guys at? Yeah, we're in Amor, Alberta right now, uh, just starting the, the Central Division swing, so we're looking forward to it. And and I understand earlier today you uh, you got to go out and do a skate with a with a local um, a minor team there. Um, you know how much fun is it to be able to go back into these smaller communities and and give back that way and and just brighten up the the faces of those kids. Yeah, obviously it's really fun for us. We got a few guys from like the Calgary area, so it's good for them to kind of come home. Obviously, beautiful scenery here with the mountains and stuff. So uh, to get on the ice and have a practice of our own, and then uh, have the the young kids come out and join us. Uh, for a little skate afterwards was really awesome and uh, it's always good to to share our knowledge with them I guess and uh, just realize that we were in their shoes once and uh, how big of a deal it is for them so uh, it's pretty cool to have them out there. For you, for you uh, Prince Albert native uh, did you go to a lot of games did you have anybody that you looked up to or that you know when you were younger that you know kind of you idolized? Yeah I went to we had season tickets all the way uh, pretty much since I was like five years old. We also billeted players. So uh, I obviously looked up to those ones. First one was Ryan Button. He's That was a long time ago, and he was he was our first one. He's now playing in Germany. So I would look up to him, and then I was we were lucky enough to have Josh Morrissey at our house. Uh, so obviously he's an NHL player now. I, I kind of dialed into what he would do and uh, and really learned a lot from him. So uh, it's kind of the two guys for the Raiders that I look up to. You still keep in touch with uh, those guys? Yeah, for sure. They uh, obviously beca- become part of your family. So uh, you get pretty close with them and, uh, and yeah, still stay in touch with them whenever you can. Well, like I said, off the top, you guys are the hottest team in the CHL right now on an eight game winning streak um, as the top ranked team, you know, everybody, everybody's kind of gunning for you. Everybody wants to end your streak. Um, is that fun for you guys? Do you, do you guys like rising up to that challenge? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's always good. We're, we're lucky enough to play in a few home openers in the start of the year uh, to kind of get in some big contests early on. Uh, to, to kind of get us used to that and then obviously in this road trip with having the start we have like you said all the teams are going to be looking forward to the night against us uh, so I think that helps us to to keep our pace of play at the top and uh, not lower down our standards so uh, we are really looking forward to the road trip and and uh, hopefully we can keep things going and for a long road trip like this like it's eight games it's over a couple of weeks is it is it better as a team to get it out of the way earlier in the season help you guys and i know you guys have, a lot of you guys have played together for a while now but to to gel together a little bit more yeah for sure like you said we do have a lot of guys returning from last year so uh, i think our group is already really tight uh coming into this season but for sure having a road trip like this early on in the season get to spend a lot of time in the hotels and and uh days at the rink on the road it's it's a lot of fun for us and uh and yeah it, it does for sure help you gel a little bit closer together and uh and, and yeah like just like I said, uh, keeping the start going. What uh, what do you guys do to kill time on the bus? Uh, yesterday we had a long day, like nine hours or something on the road. So pretty much left early. So a uh, good little nap for the first uh, quarter, half or so. And then uh, got a couple consoles on the bus. We can play some NHL, some MLB, things like that. And then a little bit, or we had a game of poker to finish it up on the bus. So it was, it was a good day. Who's... Uh... <laughs> who's the best at uh nhl or mlb is there is it consistent uh, or you got a few yeah steph's usually been the best one at nhl mlb we we haven't really had a lot of head-to-head games we kind of just do like home run derbs and stuff and i was i was a champ yesterday so i'll take the crown there um and yeah other than that i think poker i can't remember who won but we got a lot of good players and and when you're going on the bus um you know obviously as a fifth year guy captain of the team i uh, I'm assuming you get to pick where you want to go. Is there, a, is there, are there guys on the team that you're just like, no, you're not sitting near me. Uh, no, I don't think we really have to <laughs> like that. It's uh, on the bus is always a fun time. So we got all the young guys coming to the back, joining games when they can. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of fun on there. Awesome. Uh, what type of team are you guys this year? Like you've only allowed like seven goals in the, in the last seven games. You guys are, like I said, off, off the top, you're on quite the heater right now. Yeah, I think, like you said, from that goals against point of view, Spooner's been unbelievable for us so far. And I think I give a lot of credit to him for for that uh, stat right there. Uh, but other than that, we've been able to find the back of the net. We play a super fast game. 
So I think uh, we catch teams teams in that area, and and uh, we're just we've been uh, able to score on our, all our chances, and uh, and yeah, fill the net like that. And earlier this month, Coach Mike Johnson got his 500th career win. What's been like playing under him, and and just the way he's the the culture he's created in Portland. Yeah, he's an amazing coach. Like you said, the culture here, uh, just how hard working with our entire staff. Uh, they've all mostly had experience at the NHL level. So for them to bring that knowledge back to us uh, is really helpful for us. And to to just see, obviously, we have a lot of players that have gone pro uh, that that most of us have played with. So kind of to see that where, what their standards are, their work ethic, and to just follow them. And I think it's really uh, stuck with us. We got an older group this year. So I think a lot of us have taken those things away and are kind of just uh, keep it a part of our organization. And I think we've done a really good job uh, starting from Mike all the way down to us. You guys have been competitive your entire time in Portland, competitive before that. How are you guys able to stay such stay so competitive year in and year out, knowing that there's so much turnover? And you guys are essentially a homegrown team with basically just Josh Davies, who hasn't spent pretty much his entire WHL career with you guys. Yeah, I think Mike takes a lot of pride in that and, and how they draft and having a homegrown team. And uh, like you said, I, we uh, we have had a ton of success, I think like 640 win seasons in a row or something like that. So uh, it makes it a lot of fun coming to the rink when you're a competitive team. And I think everyone uh, just understands that that's the culture here and that that we're always pushing to just win hockey games. And I think we've uh, done a really good job of that and uh, creating that culture here. So everyone has fun coming to the rink. We know we're going to be competitive and uh, and our main goal is just to win. So who were those guys that helped other than other than coach um, helped instill that in you in 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 your rookie season, uh, along with uh, Jack O'Brien and James Stefan, who you've obviously played with every year? Yeah, some of the guys when I came in that really took me under their wing, I'd say one was Reese Newkirk. He's also a Saskatchewan kid, so he really uh, kind of made me feel comfortable. He was one of the hardest workers I've seen here and obviously really good player uh, going on to play pro hockey. So I think he he really showed me what it was like to. Uh, try to become a pro and and see what that's like. And then also like the leadership group, like John Ludwig, those kinds of guys that uh, that really set the pace for us. And uh, like I said, just showed, showed us what it was like to work. And uh, and then like our training staff too, like Richie obviously is always honest about our workouts and stuff. And uh, and uh, although some days we might not want to, he he's always there to, uh, to, to help us uh, have that mentality and uh, really keep us going. So it's uh, it's always a hard working day in Portland and uh and we've just learned to love it and it's it's a lot of fun here do you feel like the old guy on the team now yeah a little bit obviously <laughs> we've had a lot of these guys I've been playing with them for the last three four years even so so it helps a little bit to not feel that old when we don't have as many young guys so uh but for sure I do feel a little bit old <laughs> and and for for uh, obviously Jack and James um you know you guys have been been together for five years now how close are you guys and how special is it to, for the three of you to spend your entire career in Portland so far? Yeah, it's pretty amazing coming in, obviously not knowing them uh, when you first come in here, 15, 16 years old, and then realizing that you're going to play five years together is pretty amazing. And and I've gotten super close with both of them. And uh, it's super special to play your whole career in one city, obviously, especially a place like Portland and have some of the success that we've had. So it uh, makes it a lot of fun and, and obviously a couple of relationships that will last a lifetime. How much do you guys push each other just because you've been together for so long? Yeah, I think that's an entire part of our culture is just how hard we push each other, especially in practices and games. Uh, just like the competitiveness and and Mike does a good job of that, having lots of competitions and practice and stuff. And I think the battles that we have in practice really prepare us for the games. And uh, obviously the little friendly competitions we have, you always want to be the best one out there. So uh, it's, it's a lot of fun competing with one another and uh, growing better together like that. Now it's your second year as as captain of the team. Um, you know how special is it for you to 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 be the captain of Portland, seeing you know some of the other names that you're following in their footsteps. Yeah, it's like we've been talking about such a great organization with a lot of history and uh, success. So to 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 be honored with that with the captaincy has been uh, a really uh, important thing for me. I think, and I take a lot of pride in that. Uh, and just being able to have a, a good opportunity this year with such a good team. I think it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see what we can do. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing how far we can push this group. What uh, what style of leader would you say that you are? I think I'm just leader by example. I think I do uh, the right things, especially when no one, even when no one's looking. 
Uh, I think I just always uh, try to act as professional as I can. And uh, I think we we have a couple like Chazelski and, and OB are both really good vocal leaders. So I leave a little bit of that side to them and uh, and kind of do my own thing and lead by example and and uh, make sure guys are following. Obviously, with with such a veteran team and a team that's been together for so long, there probably doesn't have to be that much said most of the time. Yeah, I think a lot of us know, especially with the last couple of years going uh, to the second round of playoff, we do have a lot of experience. So I think we all know what that feeling is like. And uh, and yeah, most of the guys usually do know. Uh, sometimes there is things that need to be said, so we'll step up. But lots of times we just know uh, what we need to be able to go do on the ice. And when things get get tight for you guys, who's the who's the guy in the room that keeps it loose? I think we got a few guys. Steph for sure is one of them. Uh, he he likes to keep it loose. We got a a lot of a lot of good jokes going around in the room when, when things need to be loosened up. But uh, for sure, we can get serious and uh, and obviously play play to our strengths. Uh, we've done a good job so far. How does this team compare to that dominant team that you're on in your rookie season? Yeah, I think there's a lot of similarities. Obviously, uh, then coming into the league, I wasn't sure what to expect, and and to be able to have that good of a team that year guys like Seth Jarvis and, and Reese Newkirk leading the way. I think it was, it was really cool to see that. And now, like you said, this year, there are a lot of similarities. I think uh, we don't have a ton of like star power. We just got a full uh, four lines and seven D that can work. And we got good goaltending. And I think that's kind of our strength is that uh, we just, we just keep coming at you in waves and, uh, and it's been working really well for us so far. You you keep climbing the the all time Portland uh, scoring leaders and and goal scorers by the by the end of the season it wouldn't be shocking for you to be top twenty five in goals and points um, and you know just how special what is what would that mean for you to be able to to get into that I know we've we've you know we've touched on this a bunch of times already with the history of the club but but just to see your name amongst some of the those great players that even from you know, back in their Memorial Cup years. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty cool. Obviously, uh, it'd be a little bit cooler to have a Mem Cup under the belt than than the scoring titles. But I think obviously uh, that would be a good uh, achievement for me, and uh, probably helps playing five years here. So uh, I think that is uh, something to look forward to if, if I can make that happen. But uh, like I said earlier, we're just looking for a championship. Well, so we'll talk about the championship. What in the last two years, um, last two playoff rounds? What have you guys learned? Uh, to help you to get further into the playoffs this year and hopefully make a run to the Memorial Cup. Yeah, I think a couple of years ago when we were playing Seattle there, we had a, we had a really good series with them. We we were able to get up in the series and let them kind of crawl their way back into it and beat us in seven. So that one, uh, that one hurt a ton. And I think we all learned that just how big every game matters and that that fourth one is the hardest to win to close out a series. So I think we learned uh, just how important it is, obviously, to win that last that final game and how hard it is. Uh, and then last year we had we had another good uh, another good team. Obviously, Kamloops kind of loaded up, and and uh, I guess we might have been a little bit outmatched there. But I thought we still had uh, we forced some good games, and we had a, we had a competitive team. So I think just knowing uh, how hard it is in playoffs and how much of a step up it is from the regular season, uh, just with all the guys coming back and have that feeling, I think uh, it's going to be a good look for us this year. I talked to to Craig Button about this. Um, and, and he said, you know, obviously age is a huge thing. The, mm -hmm. So the, the good teams are good, but then as they get older, they get even better. The experience, um, you know, you guys add in Josh Davies this year as a guy who hasn't been around the club, how do you integrate him? How, do, how easy is it for him to fit in with a team that's been together for so long and how much of an impact is he making for you guys? Yeah, he's fit in really well so far, obviously. He hasn't had uh, the playoff exposure like we have, so it's uh, it's a little bit different for him in that way uh, to come over and uh, and be on a squad like like we are this year. So uh, he's fit in really well so far, and I think like being an older guy, he knows what the league is about. So uh, it's really helped him uh, kind of gel in a little bit easier, and uh, and he's been a big addition for us so far. So uh, we're looking forward to having him uh, in the playoffs this year. Who's been in your in your WHL career? Who's been the toughest guy that you've had to play against or that you've played against? Oh, uh, it's a good question. I think toughest to play against, like offensively, like for sure. me to go up against, would probably be some of the Seattle defense when I was younger, like Simon Kubacek and and Tyrell Bauer, both 
uh, really hard players to play against. Um, those are probably the toughest I'd say I'm having to go against. And, and what about uh, your favorite, like what rig do you go into and you're just like, I always have a good game when I'm here. Uh, I've had a lot of success in Prince George. Uh, I think I like, I don't know. I like, I like the winter. So maybe every time we go there, it seems to be freezing cold and I don't mind that getting a little Tim Hortons. We're not used to that <laughs> uh, in, in the States. So uh, having a little pregame routine there and I've had a lot of su success there. And then obviously I think I last year we got to play in Prince Albert, my hometown. So that was, that was pretty special and, and a game I really look forward to and uh, was lucky enough to have a pretty good night there. I was going to ask you about that. So we can, we can touch on that now. Wild that in your five year WHL career. Now I know, COVID messed with it and uh so that could have changed things but to finally last year in January get to play your first game at home what was it like how excited were you and and when you scored that goal and heard the crowd cheer because I, I I went back and I watched that today uh what was that like for you Stefan from the bottom of the left circle sends it back for Klaus and scores <laughs> Welcome home, Gabe Clausen, the Prince Albert native with the tap in on the power play, extends the Winterhawks lead to two. And you can hear the cheers from his friends and family in attendance. Yeah, it was amazing. Like you said, it's kind of crazy how five years I only got to play there one time. So that kind of sucks, but but it also makes that one game a lot more special, I guess. Uh, so having the chance to go play there last year and uh, with a lot of my a lot of my buddies here, like Steph and OB, those guys who've never even been to Prince Albert. So uh, to kind of show them around and uh, let them know that this is like my home rink, it was pretty cool to come back there. And uh, and yeah, scoring that goal was was a really good feeling and uh, and getting the win. It was a it was a super special night for me. First star honors that game, too. What was you know, like there must have been a lot of people that hadn't been to very many of your games before. How, how nice was it to be able to kind of share that experience with them? Yeah, I was having like all my grandparents and and uh, relatives and stuff at the game. A lot of my buddies that I grew up with playing hockey and going to high school with and stuff, they were all at the game. So it was super special. And uh, yeah, like we said, having a, having a good night there helped uh, make it that much better. And uh, and to be able to do that in front of them was was a really good feeling. Now, the other game that I wanted to ask you about, I'll I'll throw out the date and see if you can tell me what it was. This You weren't directly involved in this. But December 18th, 2021, does it ring a bell? Uh, no. No? Okay. It was, uh, I'll give you another clue. It was in Spokane. December 18th, 21. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Uh, Cross Hannes and James Stefan. Oh, Hannes. over the net? Yeah. Goes in behind the net to Hannes. Hannes holds it. Now just lifts it up in the air. The puck is batted in the air, out of the air by Stefan and in the net. And it's now 4-1 in favor of Portland. We saw this in an NHL game last week. Yeah. Now you were on now you were on the ice for that. And it was yeah. only a week, it was only a week after Zegras and, and Milano did it in Anaheim. Um had you guys talked about that? I haven't talked to any of you about that, and I've always wondered because yeah. it was only a week later. Yeah, well, I think Cross had already scored a couple Michigan goals before that, so we knew he was kind of the guy that if someone was going to do it, it was going to be him. And there was a chance earlier in the game, I think, where he had the puck behind the net for like four or five seconds, and we were all like, oh, is he going to do it? And then finally, I think it was in the third period maybe, uh, he actually did do it, and Steph was in front of him, and I were both there, and and it came right to him, and he was able to knock it in. And it was it was pretty insane feeling for us, and and obviously we were a little bit mind-blown by by what just happened. It was pretty sweet. Yeah, when you're on, like, when you see that happening, when it's, are you thinking, like, did you have any clue that he was going to try to flip it over? I know you said he'd, he yeah. had, he'd done the Michigan, but, like, had yeah. you guys practiced that at all? We hadn't practiced it. So it was, Cross is a super creative player. So we, I guess we probably did think that it might happen. And then, uh, and then when it did, obviously it worked out well. So uh, it was yeah, <laughs> yeah. pretty cool. What, uh, what was the reaction in the dressing room afterwards or even on the bench afterwards? Yeah, we were kind of just in shock for the next like five minutes and like, holy smokes, did that really just happen? And uh, and yeah, it was a pretty, pretty cool feeling for all of us, especially those two that were that were able to be on there. And uh, and we've been able to see it a bunch of times on Sports Center top tens and stuff. So, yeah, it's pretty sweet to be to be a part of that. Yeah, that one uh, that one's going to live on for a while now. Um, you guys are the CHL game of the week this week against Red Deer on Friday. Um, how nice is it to have 
it's a it's a free view so anybody they don't people don't have to have an account to to subscribe or to watch this one so how nice is it to have be able to showcase yourselves for anybody that wants to tune in and and see the top ranked team in the chl yeah we're really looking forward to it obviously it's the first game of our road trip so we got to try and set the standard uh and let these teams know uh, what it's like in the U S. So it's uh, we always look forward to these road trips to come in here and, and get a taste of the different teams. Obviously you only get to play them once a year. So, so they're always going to be good games, fast games. Everyone's uh, trying to beat one another. So uh, it's going to be a really good game and uh, hopefully get a lot of viewers. And when you guys are on a long road trip like this or, and a three and three this weekend, how much easier is it for you now that you've been in the league for this long to to just know how to take care of yourself and your body to be prepared for the the that whole road trip and and even like the the third game and the third night? Yeah, I think uh, this is definitely the longest road trip I've been a part of in my career. But uh, but we have been on the road. Obviously, in the Western League, you're on the road a lot, so you have a lot of overnights at hotels. You just got to figure out how to get the best sleep possible. Make sure your routines. Uh, stay as, as similar as you can to, to when you're at home. So uh, just try and dial that in and, and spend your time at the rink the right way and uh, just make sure you come ready to play every night. And, uh, and, and yeah, like you said, the teams are going to be going to be gunning for us. So we just got to be ready to play our own game. And, and I think we're confident in our own game. So yeah, it's, that's, that's about it. What would be one thing that you would like to tell the rookie version of yourself that you wish you had known in your, in your rookie season that would have helped you out? It's a good question. Uh, I think just knowing like how quick your career goes by and how every season, uh, if you have a chance to win, then obviously you got to try it. Uh, you can't think that, Oh, I still have a year after that. I still have next year and stuff. You gotta, you gotta realize that it's, it's hard to win in this league. And, uh, and so you gotta, you gotta do everything you can uh, to try and prepare yourself for that and, and get the best out of yourself that you can. I've talked to a few guys that have said, you know, they, they say it's, it's cliche, but it goes by fast. And when you're a rookie, like you say, you don't think it's you think you have all the time in the world. But like when you think back, does, can you believe it's already been five years? Yeah, it is crazy to think that it's already been five years. Looking back at sometimes it feels like a long time ago, but sometimes it feels like I just got to Portland like last year. And uh, and obviously, like you said, having that unreal team we had then uh, was a good chance to win. Obviously, got ruined by COVID. So uh you just realize that that every year matters and it, and it sure go, does go by quick. I won't keep you much longer, but I'll, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to quiz you one more time. Uh, last year, the last year, sorry, not last year, the last year that Portland won a Memorial cup. Do you know what year that was? 98, I think. Yeah. Okay. And do you know where it was that year? I think it was in Spokane. It was so, and that was the last time the Memorial cup was hosted in the United States. Where is it hosted this year? Saginaw. I'm just saying there's, yeah. there's gotta be a sign for you guys, point. right? Point. I haven't <laughs> thought of that. Gabe, good luck on the road trip. Thanks for yep. joining me today. Um, good luck this season and, and hopefully uh, a long and, and uh, deep playoff run for you guys. Yeah. Thanks very much. That's all for this episode. See you again next week where we'll talk with two more teams in the CHL Top 10 Rankings. Thanks for listening.